G'day everyone, welcome back to my site, welcome back to my channel, welcome to my video. My name is Alex, this is my channel Alex Does, and if you don't know already, this is my bushcraft, Australian bushcraft build, or certainly bushcrafting in the bush in Australia to build a shelter. So welcome back, we're here to do some more work on the fireplace today, we are so close, We, if you saw on the previous video, or the one before that, we're only so far off reaching the top on the stone and mud fireplace i'm pretty keen to crack on with that and maybe fingers crossed we can get there either today or tomorrow that'd really be nice other than that we're doing a fairly basic feed this afternoon i've got a really fat juicy scotch fillet steak for dinner i'm going to do with some sweet corn on the cob and a baked potato um, I did uh, duck down the hardware store yesterday and grabs, grabbed a few bits and bobs to hobble together a bit of a suspension system to hold my grill above the fire, so fingers crossed that works to get that steak done. Other than that, the weather's, uh, look, it's it's dry. Everything's really dry actually around here at the moment. It's uh, I don't know how long it's been since we had rain here, so it'll be interesting to see how much water is down at the creek for me to go and get some drinking water. Um, but windy, windy as. I did see on the forecast yesterday that south of here there's some actual gale force wind warning. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. The site's pretty good in, as term, in terms of uh, any deadfall. We're all right there. The stuff directly around uh, camp is fairly young and new. Tall trees, but they're, you know, they're fairly small and supple and only, you know, they're not likely to be dropping anything. We do have some really big, tall eucalypts that are uh, within striking range if they were to come down but obviously the risk of that is fairly minimal not that i'm totally risk adverse because if it wasn't for mankind's propensity to take the occasional risk we'd still be living in the trees a bit of bit of risk is good for you i say so yeah i'm gonna get cracking on i'm gonna stop waffling on um i'm gonna i'm gonna empty my little pack i will go uh get some rocks i'll have to get some drink of water at some point we'll make some mud we'll do the thing on the thing and make the thing go up where the fireplace goes and the chimney and s smoke you know how it goes all right welcome back let's go see what there's not much water in the creek It's a bit seedy looking even down there. I might have to grab it from up here where it's running a bit today. Hmm. We could do with some rain. It's crazy how fast you run out of the uh, clay. You think you do heaps. I did normally only do three buckets today. I did four because I thought I want to push myself. There's still just there's still a little bit left. That's really not going to go far. This is how far. What one fist up to there? A little bit higher. We've got a little bit more clearance on that side. And you know, whatever that is, seven inches, six inches up to the roof there. I'm just wondering if maybe, like I kind of like it if the opening was here. It gives me just a, a little bit more clearance before the roof, if the roof's coming over maybe, that it can blow out. I'm kind of tempted to put the capstone on here and then just fill in the wall at the back. Maybe I should just sit it up there, eh? See what it looks like. Maybe I'll sit it up there and I'll sit it more forward and then we'll fill in behind it, because, yeah. I'm gonna go for it, hang on. All right, this is just a test fit. <coughs>
come and have a look. So I kind of like it, but I'm kind of wondering, I don't mind that the, the opening is only that big. I'm just wondering if maybe I'm being a bit impatient and I should go up just a little bit higher. The other issue too is it's, it's all real awkward to get it up there. I'm leaning towards doing it and then I'll just build the rocks up that way until it reaches the, uh, the beam at the top here. I was just thinking for a second there, maybe um, maybe I should leave it there and have my fire tonight without actually putting any clay and bedding it in, just as a, a proof of concept. Because if we put it there, it means the rest of the rocks that go on top are there purely for aesthetics, which, you know, is that really a big deal? But then I also like that the, the exit is further, is further from the roof, because we're going to end up doing the wood tiles i like a little bit more of a gap or whatever the roof ends up being if it's going to be natural it's going to be a combustible material but surely too a bigger exit is a better exit for fire and for the smoke too i'm i'm really leaning towards bedding it in it sits there nice and steady too i like how it sits there i also like the fall off of here i think for the most part that will direct any rainfall out of the chimney rather than in Bugger it, I'm going to go for it. Alright, there we go. I've, um, I just ended up using the rest of the remaining clay just to build some more uh, support around the rocks. I've already done a little bit more support in here at the over where the opening is so they'll dry rock hard and, and really solidify this piece which is already i mean if it wasn't in a great position that would rock and move around but it's nice and solid that doesn't go there let's move that so there we go so you can see we've really not got much to fill in the rest which as i said is just going to be purely aesthetics so i also use some clay to seal around the front i'll show you that in a minute there's our opening it's between three and you know a fist wide there i think there's enough overhang there i think it's going to be fine the real test of course is going to come i'm going to start the fire and uh we'll see how the smoke acts whether it does go out there and start like a convection and suck the rest of the fire out or whether uh we're going to have a, a problem and the wind blows it straight into the shelter there yeah, so that's quite high now and you can see that's that stone there so there's a little bit of a ledge here too so i'll end up building rocks on top of here just to fill this space in here oh all right what an achievement that's certainly all i'm going to be doing on that today my tripod is caked in mud right i'm out of water i need to go and get some water and then uh might as well I'll set up the, uh, yeah, I did mention earlier, I've got a uh, new thing they want to try for suspending the grill. Just some chain and some hooks and stuff. So I'm just going to clean up a bit. I'll go and get some drinking water and then uh, we'll start playing around with that and then we'll get a fire going. Whew. Still, what an achievement, eh? Have a look at it from under here. That's the hole up there. Hopefully that works. Before we start the fire, I know it's hard to see, so I apologise. I've got my grill there suspended. It's from uh, some chains that go up to the bars up there. So that's fine. We'll see how that goes. I think that height's probably fine. I can also always make it shorter if need be. I know, I know this is the this is the uh, Alton Goods titanium grill. I know that they do now make a suspension kit for these. They didn't have those when I bought this, so otherwise I would have bought it. Um, I don't even know how much that suspension kit is. I know it's a little bit more lightweight than this is, but uh, I'm not going to be taking these chains home with me. I'm going to take the grill home, but uh, I'm just going to leave the chains here. Um, and I am actually planning on getting... I'm trying to find another grill that is larger it will fill a lot more space in here which is the same kind of pattern of, of uh, grill that's quite small holes but it's just bigger so the same thing but bigger I know I've seen other people on YouTube with them I just haven't been able to find them locally yet I may need to go online and have a look but um, yeah that'll be a lot better but uh, yeah we'll see how we go with that
all right plenty of smoke coming out of there but i'm yet to be convinced because there's a little bit inside as well uh, it could be the wind obviously smite the fire's always really smoky at the beginning but um more so in the, later on once we get a bit of heat going but uh yeah there's a bit of smoke coming out of here though so i'll be honest so we'll see how we go see how we go but there's tons pumping out the back though tons pumping out the back work in progress All right, I think I'm going to call it. That's, uh, as obviously as you can see, smoke coming out there, but uh, there's too much smoke coming out on the inside. You can just see here, I'm just not getting the convection coming up. I'm, I don't think it's just the wind today, because I've had winds like this before, but it's just not happening. Not happening. So, and bizarrely enough, I'm having trouble getting the fire going. Um, and again, maybe that's, I'm just not getting the convection sucking in of clean air at the bottom that I was before, maybe. That's okay. We learn things. Um, I definitely want that hole to be bigger. I'm, I'm not giving up yet on the, uh, side exit, but I think tomorrow I'm going to, maybe even today, maybe even today, I think I'll rip that rock off and then build it up some more before I put it on again and get a bigger side exit. Oh, I've just taken that rock off and uh, I don't know if it had a positive effect or not but all of a sudden the inside is full of smoke but I am starting to get a bit more convection coming down the bottom there so you can see that we're getting a good plume of smoke coming out the top fingers crossed I don't think the wind is really playing or doing us any favors today but a lot of this is going to happen too because the opening is just so big and once you get decent heat in there you don't get as much smoke so there's maybe a bit of moisture in that wood, so um, I don't know, I'm second guessing myself now. But I'm sticking with the rock off for today. Yeah, see, it's cleared inside now. So it may just be wind related too. Who freaking knows? Give us your opinion in the comment below. Tell me what you think the issue is and how I should best resolve it. Maybe I should go with the original plan of just having a traditional straight up exit chimney. Maybe that hole's just too big. The, the actual opening to the to the fireplace is just too big, who knows. So I'm just sitting here contemplating the uh, the whole chimney fireplace situation. I like to stew on ideas for many hours, if not days, to kind of run mental scenarios and try and figure out what might be causing the issue. And again, as I've mentioned before, if you've got an opinion on this, feel free to put it in the comments. But I've removed that top capstone now, as you saw. I think there's a few flat factors at play. Yes, it's possible that that exit hole was not sufficient. I also think, as I've tried tapering those rocks in, a lot of them were overhanging. And any, as the chimney comes up, any overhanging rocks are gonna catch smoke and create like an eddy. And that's gonna kind of slow down the, or inhibit the flow of smoke going up out of the chimney. I also think while we don't have the rocks going all the way up to the roof on the inside that there's some smoke coming in this way as well. But I think the other thing to keep in mind too, yeah it's a windy day today and let's not forget that the walls of this structure aren't solid. This is the only solid thing here so whilst there's some wind blowing around it's blowing through the structure. So as wind blows it's coming across the front of the uh, fireplace opening and it is going to pull, you can see it happening now, it's coming from behind me here and it's pulling smoke out here now. So at this stage I'm not prepared to say that we've failed, I definitely don't think we've failed, we're learning, we're learning as we go. We're becoming uh, bushcraft fireplace chimney experts. <laughs> 
So yeah, but where do we go from here? I think I'm going to focus on, with this, I'm going to focus on filling in the space up to the roof. I have had an idea um, on how I could deal with watershed if we do end up running the chimney above the roof just straight up like a traditional chimney. Again, it all depends on this, what I'm going to be using for you, roof materials. And as I mentioned on the previous video where I was reviewing the saws, I'm considering at the moment doing shingles or technically shakes, but um, I've been playing around and um, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not entirely hopeful. I did try the other day, I came across a fairly considerable, uh, I don't know, it was a blue gum or a red gum or some sort of gum gum um, stump or a round from a, a tree trunk. It was probably the sort of size that I'm looking at, so probably about, no, oh, it was maybe about that tall, and it was about that round. And I, I used a couple of steel wedges. So I've got those up here. So I just used a couple of steel wedges and my axe, and I made ended up making two extra wedges just out of some stick. Yeah, I managed to split that log through the centre all the way down. Um, and the grain was straight, but the grain also kind of intermingled so you don't get a clean break, you don't get a clean surface. It was all, I don't know, I don't know what the technical term would be. So yeah, gum is not necessarily, uh, and that's the majority of what's around here is gonna be suitable. Um, I did see on uh, a video of some guys doing some restoration work in Sydney making shingles. They were suggesting that um, stringy bark is the best stuff to use. And yes, there's stringy bark here, but I don't think there's any on the ground. So yeah, that's an out. There is this sort of stuff. I didn't show this. I was just having a play around. I actually split this with my machete. The thing with this, obviously, it's come at a uh, bit of a twist in it, but it did split. Yeah, you could work with that surface. I, I, that's fine. I don't mind it being that rough. We just got to get it straight. And it might be the tool that I was using. It might be the wood itself. Um, there's a bit of a knot in here, which is no good. So there are some of these different species around. Uh, it's just a matter of finding one. So um, I'm going to have to do some sort of exp exploration. That's where we're at. So. No definitive answers for you. I'm, I'm really sorry for that. So, figuring it out as we go. All right, we might as well make some sort of progress um, before it gets too dark. So I've got, as I mentioned, a corn on the cob. So my plan with this is to keep all the outer leaves on. I'm just going to pull them back so we can remove all the um, hairy bits. So I just want to get all that hair, this stuff off. I don't know what the technical term for that is corn hairy bit sounds good to me I'm just gonna re-dress it <laughs> with all the leaves and uh, a little bit later what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna soak the soak it in water or well, not soak it but I'm gonna wet it so the leaves are wet and I'm just gonna put that directly on the fire here's me kitchen needs a clean so we need to crack on it it's it, we just had a downpour of rain I don't know if there's gonna be another downpour of rain so anyway, as I mentioned before, so what I want to do now is just basically wet this. It probably could have done with soaking in a bucket of water or something. So I'm just going to wet this and uh, go and put it directly on the coals. And then shortly later, we'll start the meat. All right, folks, well, I can't really wait much longer. It's getting darker and darker. I'm getting hungrier and hungrier and the fire's not playing ball. So we're just going to get this steak on there. So it's just a fairly basic scotch fillet. Yeah, salt and pepper. Like I said, really easy meal today. I just didn't want to fuss around too much. There we go. All right, let's go and put this on the grill. Oh yeah, we'll give that a couple of minutes each side and we should be good to go. While we're doing that, while we're waiting for it, we might as well get the rest of it ready. I'm sure the potato's ready. Ooh, she's a bit black. Cheese, some bacon would have been nice, but I don't have any. So I've just got some uh, chives. Right, sour cream. Right, corn. Can't have corn without butter.
All right, I think that meat might just be done. Let's go and get it. Oh, oh. it's going to be pretty rare, I think. It really should rest, but I've got to see that it's cooked, I suppose. Oh, it's, yep. <laughs> just how I like it, actually. Yum. All right, finally, there's dinner. It's going to be edible. It's going to be good. I mean, you can't go wrong. Baked potato with cheese and chives and sour cream. Corn. That, all right, let's let's just try it all just to know that I don't, I'm going a bit Michael Jackson. Hang on. Oh, oh man, that meat smells amazing. Mmm. Oh, exactly as you would expect. Let's try the corn. I think the corn might be done, be a bit undercooked, but mmm. Although I, I, I'll actually, well, I'll actually, I don't actually mind corn like this when it's raw. So this is actually pretty good. Actually, that is done just how, <clears throat> just how I like it. Ideally, this meat really should rest, but I know that you're going to want to see me eat it. Oh, perfectly, exactly how I like it. Not quite medium. Yum. Yum. Absolutely dripping. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh, that's insane. That really is so good. The simplest things, eh? Just a good quality steak over a fire. Oh, man, that's so good. All right, well, I'm going to wrap this video up. All right, so I'm going to eat my dinner now. Look at that. Ooh, yum. Looks amazing, smells amazing. I'm absolutely starving. Thank you again for coming along on this video. I'm going to say my goodbyes now. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell for notification to get notification when new videos are uploaded, which generally come out 8 a.m. every Saturday morning. Stick around for a second. You'll see a snippet of what's coming up next week. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next week. My name is Alex, and this is Alex Does. See ya. I'm still in the tent, clearly, <laughs> still in bed, oh it's 7.30 in the morning, yeah it's a strange night, 